post a copy of the um, uh, actual presentation itself, the PowerPoint, uh, which has all the detail on IT Manager as a service, uh, as well as the video, um, so you can refer back to it or share with your colleagues. Um, so before we kick off, um, you know, you, you're probably thinking, well, how does IT Mass, IT Manager as a service apply to me? Uh, well, it's got multiple different usages, and we've got clients out there who um, have um, their own IT manager um, uh, on board and they have their own, own IT staff. But IT manager as a service um, can be brought in for those big rocks that you have to achieve that can be brought in to help uh, help you achieve those strategic goals that perhaps the BAU running of IT in your existing business isn't able to achieve. It could also be um, your scenario uh, that you're reaching a point where you're thinking you might need an IT manager to get across the strategic aspects of your IT to make sure that they're aligned to your business strategy. And that's where we've had um, a lot of success with IT Mass working with companies of this size to actually help them with digital transformation. So digital transformation is very much about looking areas across the business that you can use IT to maximum benefit. And this often requires a lot of um, uh, uh, predefined strategy up front and then executing to a roadmap. And that's where IT mass is really key. The execution against roadmaps and meeting timelines for you to deliver throughout the year. And then there's also opportunities for you to um, have um, someone who can perhaps mentor and bring people up to speed within your environment. And that's where um, uh, IT mass has actually worked for a number of our customers where we're actually managing uh, people uh, in in their in their organisations, delivering on to IT on their behalf. So there's a number of areas that we can help, and I'm going to actually get Reese to um, introduce you properly to IT Mass, how it works with our customers, and talk you through some scenarios. Over to you, Reese. Thanks, Matt. Um, so yeah, IT manager as a service, or uh, as you've probably already heard us say, we, we, we sometimes call it IT mess. Uh, you, you might have all also heard it called uh, VCIO or virtual um, CIO. It's the same thing, ju just by another name. Um, here uh, at Kinetics and, and Cambium, we've developed a framework for um, delivering IT manager um, and making sure that we're delivering all the tasks that a good IT manager should deliver to the business. Um, and, and you can sort of see the, the framework on the screen in, in our IT mass wheel, and we'll go into a bit more detail on, on what each of the, the segments of the wheel do. But I really, um, to simplify the two um, main areas that we try and focus on with with IT manager or the two main reasons you might look into it the first one is around um, reducing risk or I, I more appropriately call it readiness it's about uh, being ready so it's reviewing things like policies and processes and thinking about improvements and mitigations you could do before you need them so um, example of that uh, might be that we write disaster recovery plans and put in um, mitigations so that when things like COVID hit, you're you're ready and you've got the tools in place and, and things are painless. Um, the other main aspect of it is making the best use of your IT spend, which is um, kind of a more exciting part of the of the role. Um, so it's making sure that your technology spend is not just keeping the lights on, uh, and fixing problems and fighting fires, but it's about adding real value to your staff and your business and your customers. Because if we're not adding value to your staff, what's the point of having um, the technology in the first place? So, uh, and as Matt mentioned, to do this, we we need to have a clear IT strategy, and we also need to really understand your business and and what makes it tick. So. Diving into some of the things, and I'm just going to go through each of the um, the pillars or the um, the segments of this wheel, uh, and give you a few quick examples on on what we do and and why it's important. Um, so the first one is around management communication. Um, as Matt said, the some of the engagements we do for IT manager as a service. Uh, is actually with companies where they have their own internal IT staff um, and in some cases have their own internal 
IT manager or, or person with the title of IT manager. Um, and so our role there is more as a translator. So often the IT manager is actually quite technical, they're quite uh, hands-on, they're quite on the ground, um, and there's often a, a bit of uh, problems communicating between the business or the management and the IT staff. So we can um, fill that gap because we talk technology and we understand it and we've got years of experience in it but we also understand businesses and what's important to them so um, we can translate what the management needs or what the business strategy is into what technology might be required for that and vice versa if the if the technical teams are saying hey we really need to do that we can turn that into uh, business reasons and why it's important for the business and and, and help them prioritize that um, we can uh, manage internal uh, IT staff, so teams, uh, and do that whole mentoring program and, and just ensure that they've got a bit more of a wider view of the world than they might have just with their, their one role. Um, and we can also communicate to your staff as well. So um, often with IT teams you, or, or I, technology in general, you're doing a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure that things are, are kept running. And a lot of the staff don't know that's going on. So one of the things uh, we can do is share that um, with your staff so they know what's going on. Um, obviously, we have um, a particular cadence that we like to do with steering meetings with a wider group and in fact we've uh, sometimes involved in board meetings to present to the board to uh, present the IT strategy as well. Uh, so the next sort of piece of the puzzle is um, vendor and application and license management. So um, as an example we've got a client that has um, 14 branches all around uh, New Zealand um, and historically they had a lot of servers based in Auckland so the network was configured in such a way that everything went back to Auckland and through that way however there were lots of problems the the speeds weren't particularly great um, and also we'd worked with them over the years to move a lot of their applications off to the cloud because it was a much better fit for them um, in that situation we reviewed the contract with their ISP we changed the way all their connections were made so that each of the branches had independent internet connections but could still be centrally managed uh, and we I think in most cases more than quadrupled the internet speeds for them uh, and reduced their costs at the same time so it's an example of how we can review um, your vendor agreements and make sure that we're getting the best bang for buck and obviously things like licenses especially with cloud licenses where you're paying often a per user per month cost reviewing those and making sure that people are um, you know clearing out old users can can save money as well strategy and roadmap is is kind of the keystone behind everything we do so we perform an annual IT review as part of the IT uh, manager's service it's a it's a flight plan review that um, involves interviews and workshops with your key staff um, and as a result of that we um, form a strategy and a roadmap for that year so and that's agreed with uh, with you as the customer um, and it makes sure that what we're doing and what we're proactively um, putting in place fits fits your business um, so yeah that's a that's something we do on an annual basis and it's really the starting point for the for the whole engagement because without understanding your strategy and your business requirements we, we, we obviously can't plan the technology security and risk is obviously a, a, a massive topic and it's a it's a journey it's it's not a destination there's constant security threats and we must be on top of them and we must be adding to them and adapting constantly because unfortunately the security threats are constantly changing um, and, and risk as I mentioned before is a big part of any IT managers role we need to identify the risks and be aware of it and then implement uh, mitigations in place so it's things like making sure we've got a disaster recovery or a business continuity plan in place and, and like I said before that's important to be ready it's a readiness strategy when we have customers who had a disaster recovery plan that we'd written and we'd agreed with them and we'd gone through it when COVID hit 
they didn't go and grab the disaster recovery plan and start reading it because all of the mitigations were already in place. Things just um, things just work. People could work from home painlessly. Um, part of this as well was making your staff aware of security risks. Um, you know, training your staff on the threats out there um, is is a is a critical part. You can have all the technology in the world, but if your staff aren't aware of the threats. Um, you can still uh, get into trouble. So we also look at things like where your critical data is being saved and being stored and making sure it's backed up and making sure it's protected and the permissions are correct. Um, and we look into security um, incident response plans as well. What do you do if there has been a breach and how do you know? Have you got the alerts in place? So that's quite a quite a big and important and ongoing part of the uh, IT mass engagement. Governance policy and process again is one of those things um, I, I guess that is important but not urgent. It's 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 never the top of anyone's list to update their IT policies, for example. But it is actually really important, and it's always it's one of those things again that you need to be ready for. It's important to have a good IT policy in place before you need it, before you have a staff member who does something questionable. Um, a well-written IT policy um, should set the staff's expectations on the use of technology. Um, so this is an area that uh, the IT managers service um, can really provide some quick wins for you uh, because we've got a whole library of templates that we've developed over the years um, that have come from our team around uh, IT policies and security policies uh, and processes as well. So um, we can really uh, get you up and running with IT policies and, and other types of policies really quickly uh, because we can start with a with a template that we know is you know, going to be a reasonably good fit for you. Um, and it's the same with privacy policies. The changes to the Privacy Act in December last year mean that uh, leaking personal information now needs to be notified. Um, so, you know, would your staff know what constitutes a data breach? Would a stolen laptop be, be a data breach? Would someone losing one of their USB sticks be considered a data breach? All, all of these things um, need to be thought about. So a good privacy plan and again, making your staff aware of that plan is, is reasonably important these days with the new Privacy Act. Um, sorry, Matt. Well, I was just about to say that I, I can absolutely um, vouch for the knowledge base that Reese is talking about because and end of uh, last year when we were looking at making sure that Kinetics had the right privacy policy, the first person I went to was our IT manager as a service lead. And um, yeah, he was able to pull up um, the latest because of the, uh, the work he'd been doing with, with uh, clients with policy requirements in Europe, which of course are much more stringent than our own mm. and was able to produce uh, some documentation for us to base our own policy on from. So it's, a, it's an excellent resource, the knowledge base. Yep. And, and also we've gotten their review and improve IT processes. That's things like having a process when a new staff member starts and when a staff member, more importantly, when a staff member leaves the organisation, you know, do we have a clear process that all their accounts gets disabled in a timely manner? Um, you know, often the um, IT teams won't necessarily know that someone's left until um, th they realise the desk is empty. So it's making sure you've got good IT process around those entry and exit policies and the same with uh, new devices and then disposing of old devices. And so the last one is productivity and business advantage. And like I said, this is the area I personally find most rewarding and, and most fulfilling um, because it's it, it should be the reason that we have technology in the first place and it should be where our technology spend is focused. Um, so th this is quite a uh, usually a, um, a unique thing per per company or per business that we work 
work with. Uh, often we hear businesses say, yeah, I know we could be doing this better or, or there has to be a better way, um, but they don't know where to start um, because you know, often even small companies have quite complex systems or complex applications or lots of applications and, the, and they can have quite complex requirements. So um, th that's where we can come in. We can you know work with you to identify the issues. You know, often that's uh, manual you know, manual handling, or there might be, you know, duplication people putting the same data in two or three different systems, or it could be people putting a lot of information and in, spending time and putting the information into a system, and it never, never gets used. It's never reported on and it's it's never used. So um, we can help step you through identifying those issues and then coming up with options for solutions. Now that could be relatively simple solutions, or it could be replacing uh, some of your systems and going through that whole review or RFP process to choose a supplier and choose an application, um, depending on on what's right with you. Um, we also uh, do uh, often do annual IT surveys of your staff. Um, so at one particular customer, every start of every year, we do that flight plan review process and we do an IT staff survey at the same time. Um, we've done that for three or four years now, and, it, and it's just a, an interesting tool to get the feedback on the staff on what their perception of the technology is and where their pain points are. Um, it's a good way to draw themes um, across you know, where the priorities should be, um, and also a bit of a tool to measure the, the, the happiness of your staff around their technology. So uh, I guess just to, to, to sum all that up, I thought I'd go through a bit of a, a, a case study. So we've um, engaged in a number of IT managers as a service um, with, with clients. And like I say, they, they have different um, focuses and different priorities. But I thought I'd go through one uh, particular case study, which is one I, I work with uh, on a weekly basis, um, which is DFA Aotearoa. Um, so they're a nationwide not-for-profit organisation that provides services to the deaf community um, and they advocate for the deaf community and they also advocate for New Zealand Sign Language which is um, uh, one of New Zealand's official languages. Um, so they have around 80 staff across uh, New Zealand, across various branches in New Zealand uh, and although they had some staff internally to do some sort of support functions, they, they felt that they were lacking in the technology leadership um, and, and that they were only really maintaining their technology and their systems and not making any progress, not making any improvements. They were really just um, keeping the lights on. So uh, as IT manager as a service, I spend half a day a week there. Um, and my remit is to progress improvements to the technology in use. So they don't want me to be bogged down in the day-to-day uh, work or IT support, they want me pushing improvements where they can see that we're making a difference. So like I said, we do that flight plan, flight, flight plan process at the start of the year, we do an IT survey with them, um, and then we work out the plan. And we've done this for a, a number of years now and, and really made some, some good gains uh, with their technology and use. So some examples of what we've achieved, we um, did quite a large cloud migration. So probably 95% of the work they do now is using cloud apps, which was a massive uh, help when COVID hit because there was no reliance on um, office or the infrastructure at the office. Um, one of the main things we did for them was actually implement uh, business intelligence dashboards. Obviously a key part for a not-for-profit is around reporting to maintain funding. So they are constantly wanting to prove um, to various government departments and, and other um, funding partners uh, the role that they're doing and the, the the good things they're doing for their community. So we put in place a Microsoft Power BI or a number of Microsoft Power BI dashboards that the management and key staff in the organisation can access. Um, and it was a real benefit for them because it's not so much about the, the number of people they're helping or the number of plans that they're delivering, but they also really needed to break it down by location or by um, 
you know, all sorts of things, the, the, the type of people they're working with um, and date ranges and things like that. So whereas before they would be exporting to Excel and doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things that were a required a lot of manual effort and b were often inaccurate and they they weren't quite right or they weren't consistent um now we've just got power bi dashboards that that do all the hard work for them um as i mentioned before we'd reviewed a number of their vendor contracts which was the um which has saved them money and, and delivered better performance um We've addressed a lot of governance issues around disaster recovery plans, privacy plans, IT policies, um, standards in place for how often we're going to replace the computers to make sure that no one's stuck with a 10 year old computer and waiting half an hour for it to switch on. Um, and we've made a lot of gains in staff productivity. So um, again, getting um, embedded in that organization and going out there on a regular basis, we, we really got to know um, the staff and their jargon and their the tools that they use and their culture. Um, and from that too, we got to know the, the business processes and could really see that there were areas where we could improve. So we've streamlined a lot of their business business processes using Microsoft Power Automate, which is a uh, an automation tool that um, you know if this then do that. Um, so things like an invoice approval process was really manual before when when someone went on a trip or or stayed somewhere and they had to submit their expenses and all that sort of stuff. It's all now um, reasonably automated. The approval process is is just a an approve button in an email. Um, so which makes it really um, streamlined. Uh, we also did a lot of work around their booking classes. So every year um, they have a New Zealand Sign Language Week. And as part of that, they promote taster classes of um, where they have tutors that come out and do a quick sort of one hour uh, teaching class of sign language. It's, it's actually really cool, and we did one ourselves this year. Uh, but the whole process around managing those classes in the past was massively manual and required a lot of admin overhead. There was generally three or four people um, just managing this process over the couple of months that these classes would be delivered. Um, we've changed all that and automated it. So now there's an online form that people fill out. When they fill it out, it automatically gets put into uh, a SharePoint system. And then as they work through um, assigning it or offering it to tutors and their tutors can approve it, um, it's all uh, much more automated and, and has a lot less admin overhead. So again, just examples of the sort of areas that we um, that we can deliver to our clients uh, once we have that sort of embedded IT mass engagement. Um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much what what uh, my role is. Um, that's that's how we do it. Um, and like I said, I think probably the advantage we have is we have this framework that we've developed. We've got this library of, of policies and processes, uh, but also we've got a great team um, here where we've got a range of experience, of uh, diverse experience from different backgrounds and uh, different industries, which means we've got a much wider view of the world than sometimes internal IT staff might, which um, is often really useful for internal IT staff and for the business. Well, thanks, Rhys. Um, that's that's really excellent. I, 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 I might actually just ask if there's any questions from the floor. Uh, before I take you through how Kinetics actually places IT mass in our Kinetics method, and I suppose how the big picture works when engaging um, uh, as an IT manager as a service. So any questions from the floor for Rhys? Don't be shy. OK, if there is no questions, um, please feel I, I, free. Are you sorry, go I, I, right? I have, I have a question there. Hey, Reese, when you um, there's organisations that you partner with that have an existing IT manager, um, how does that work? And 
you know, these various clients you engage with, how many of them have existing IT management or experience? Yeah, good question. So um, we, we do have a, a mix. So the, and I guess there's probably, from the engagements I've had, probably half of them have had internal IT roles and they probably had a guy or, or, or a girl in their company who said they're an IT manager or, or their role was an IT manager. And those engagements, um, uh, my, my role or our role is more of a, a mentoring. So we will, um, and making sure that we identify that we're there to support the business, but also to sort support the IT manager. So um, often the IT manager is is um, kind of aware that they don't have that strategic focus, or they you know they're not comfortable presenting to a board, for example, or to a management team. So again, we're there to support them um, and make sure that their um, you know, that we're delivering to to what the business wants and, and bringing them along in the journey. And it's the same too if there is an internal IT team, we can help manage that team uh, and mentor them and make sure that there's you know, personal development roadmaps and all those sorts of things um, that maybe the business aren't comfortable because it, it's hard to um, for them to engage with IT people from a technical point of view. Oh, brilliant, thanks. Good question. Any any other questions out there? Okay, well thanks for that, Reese. Do you want to just uh, forward through to the next slide, please? Yeah, sure. Okay, so look, uh, uh, during the presentation, Reese mentioned uh, a number of things. He mentioned the flight plan, which is our uh, annual review it's our opportunity to sort of review what your current state is and reimagine what it'd be like if we are properly aligned to your business strategy and then gives you a a, a roadmap for the future on how to deliver those things in many cases it's a mixture of operational um, activities and recommendations that we make um, but often they're quite large and significant recommendations that we make um, uh, Reese during the session also mentioned about replacement of your core ERP solutions or of any core applications that you have and these are um, majorly important to your business and they take a significant amount of planning and strategy to make sure you get the right outcome because no organization wants to go through a major change like that to not have the outcomes that they expect so that's where a flight plan can be great to set the scene for you a year in advance and give you a a, a 12 to 18 month uh, roadmap of how to deliver to that. Um, at Kinetics, if you're a Kinetics customer, you also get a number of ad hoc recommendations that come through from your site owner, the likes of our CTMs, which are client technical managers who own the technical relationship with you as our customer. And um, both of those uh, recommendations from either a flight plan or an ad hoc recommendation feed into our quarterly business review. And our quarterly business review sits at the center of everything that we do with our customers because it's the opportunity for us to look at those recommendations proactively. And remember, we're, we're not just putting these things in front of you because we, we think they're a good idea. If they've come from a flight plan, you've actually prioritized those things and have said that they're important strategically to your business. So it's a, it's a good checkpoint for both of us in our service delivery that we're focused on the right things. We also look at proposed initiatives, um, the projects and programs that are already underway and key activities where we uh, look at the lights on stuff as well. Um, and most quarterly business reviews, I have to be honest, we don't talk about the lights on stuff. We're talking about the key recommendations because you would expect us to be meeting our metrics around delivering the service that you're paying for from a managed service delivery perspective. Now, when we find in those quarterly business reviews that perhaps um, some of the recommendations haven't been acted on, we're often asking the question, well, what help do you need? You know, how can we help you progress those big rocks, and like, like what, that we call them, um, those big things that, you know, you said were strategically important, but they don't seem to be getting the traction. And in a lot of those cases, we're actually recommending um, to our clients the IT mass um, as a way of actually getting those things moving. Um, and uh, Reese and uh, and uh, Jason and um, uh, others in our business get um, 
a lot of engagements off the back of that type of activity. And to be honest, it's, it's all about, at the end of the day, producing outcomes for you as our customers. Um, these are all um, things that, that we can do to actually help you progress and actually make sure that you, you're you using IT as a competitive advantage. It's not just a cost on a P&L line for you. So that's what we call the kinetics method, um, the way in which we, I suppose, come at it from multiple different angles to make sure that we're producing outcomes for you that are, I suppose, dependable. Um, you know, the, the lights on aspect are actually being delivered, but also um, those uh, big objectives that actually deliver things like digital transformation are being achieved. So um, that's come to the end of our presentation. Um, if I just go to the next slide, I have put a QA, and a a big Q&A there. Um, if there's any further questions, I would welcome them from the floor. So Glenn has asked, is there any documentation that clients find particularly useful from the Kinetics engagement? Um, so the the there's a couple of different um, documentation I can think that the clients find useful so the first one like we mentioned is having that library of sort of plans and policies so the disaster recovery plan is one um, that we've done for I'd say nearly all of our IT mass clients and they find that uh, really useful because we can come uh, with a really good draft plan that that we then tweak to to, to meet their business uh, the other one that I mentioned before was the privacy policy. Um, again, a bit of a hot topic. Um, like Matt mentioned, in Europe did GDPR a few years ago. Australia updated their Privacy Act, um, I think, two years ago. And then New Zealand's updated theirs uh, December last year. So it is a it is a hot topic. Um, so the, the privacy policy is one that's really... Um, popular if you like and then obviously just IT policies we often find that companies have an IT policy but it hasn't been updated for 10 years it's got nothing in there about bring your own device it's got nothing in there about social media or mobile devices or tablets it's you know it focuses on email or you know internet usage and it's often quite out of date the way we use the internet these days is very different to how we use it 10 years ago I can remember you know maybe it's a bit longer than 10 years ago um, a lot of places had things like web marshal that blocked sites like trade me or, or or Facebook or you know it was all about blocking usage and these days there's there's really kind of it would be silly to do that because everyone's got their own phone they could do it anyway mm -hmm. so and now it's all about safety it's about blocking dangerous websites or um, making sure they're not going to sites that are purporting to be one thing but they're actually another so um, yeah IT policy is another document that um, again we've got templates that and, and we've got a few different sort of IT policies that we can help provide the clients um, and also the other thing we do do we do that review process annually which as a result of that comes uh, the flight plan report which is obviously kind of the outlines the strategy and the plan for the year. Uh, and then for um, our IT mass engagements, we tend to do a regular either monthly or quarterly update uh, that shows the client, uh, you know, what we've done. So w what have we delivered in the last period? What we're planning to do next? Um, and, and what assistance we need from them. So that's, that's an, uh, I guess, another uh, document that our clients find quite useful because they can see the progress that's been made. Very good uh, question, Glenn. Thank you for that. Um, any other questions? Well, I think uh, if that's all the questions for now, as I said, uh, we'll, we will, uh, we've recorded the session and uh, I'll send a copy of the presentation um, out on the uh, chat um, after this. So you'll be able to pick it up and, uh, and refer it to uh, colleagues in, in your business. Um, and you'll also get a copy of the presentation. So um, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, we've enjoyed uh, hosting you today's webinar. I'd like to say thanks to Reese for delivering that uh, rich content and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you.